Let's say, let's talk about the um, the Gareth Southgate situation. First of all, do you think he was right to jump? Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, I mean, it's interesting looking at the you know we were touching on the the newspapers earlier and, and the the Star back page has uh, has got the headline: Gareth will be missed. Tom Heaton obviously out on the Manchester United tour, talking to the uh, the reporters out there. Tom was brought in very cleverly by Southgate because of his connection with the, with, with the players and to help on the on the goalkeeping side. And because Tom's such a sort of you know engaging individual, the work he's done at the PFA, everyone knows him and and likes him. And and Heaton sort of talking sort of obviously very positively about Southgate and saying that every one of those 26 players who were in the squad would would have wanted Southgate to stay on but I think he's had you know we can see all the positives you know the, the, the changing the culture Des you've, you've lived through all this the change in the culture that, <laughs> that that Southgate has made from the sort of the, the nadir of Nice and the sort of you know the tail end of the Hodgson era the Sam Allardyce sort of experiment call it what you like and then Southgate coming in and just sort of restoring the pride in the shirt taking the fear out of the shirt making the players enjoying reporting again all that sort of cultural reset he did very but well with he, that he, he did fantastically yeah. with that and whoever succeeds him has, has got a, a fantastic squad to call on but also that cultural reset which has been so important but what England need is a finisher now is someone to get them over the line is a sort of an elite coach who has that ability to make the changes sort of quickly in games and this was slightly overlooked during the week which I found a bit surprising the UEFA report from the technical observers uh, who were travelling around and you know people say you know well, it's a technical observers it's a UEFA I'm it's, just you know, slightly I'm waiting for the sexy bit your, your, your eyes your eyes are glazing over <laughs> yep. but but you know I can understand that but you know if you listen if you look at the experience of the individuals involved in compiling the report Fabio Capello uh, David Moyes Ita Karanka Rafa Benitez you know it's it's a it's a decent brains trust of of coaches so anyway you you respect their uh, th- their views and you know one of the things they talked about was when um, De La Fuente made his changes at halftime when Rodri went off and um, they went from a sort of one plus two in midfield before the break with, with Rodri alongside Fabian Ruiz um, to a two plus one with Olmo almost playing in the space in front of England's uh, defence and being hit slightly earlier by uh, but but by, by Spain and exploiting that space because obviously Foden and um, Bellingham. So that's were, were a pushing criticism. On. Of, so it's a, is it a criticism of Southgate? I'm asking you. The technical no, stuff. Well, it, well, it's, well, it's well, it's two things. Why is it relevant? Well, it's very relevant because we're having a debrief this week, whether it's on George's Park or whether on Talksport, about what went wrong with England. Des, this is a problem. It's well, not Eng- a problem. Eng- England go to tournaments and then go. Oh, you know, it was disappointing, and move on to the next thing. Yeah, we have no, to be grown up and have a proper sort of debate. And, and so you, I'm just throwing UEFA's views or the UEFA technical it. observer's views into it. And just so coming to your point, the reason why it's relevant to England is A, De La Fuente made those changes and B, UEFA were basically saying England didn't really react to them. That's re- We're looking back. Now what we're trying to do is look forward. Okay. Who's going to be the next England manager? So just two things on that, which um, first they said that England's energy levels drop. In the in the second half, so you've got a, a debate then about are the players overplaying? Well, how say Rodri's played what seventy odd games, so that's a sort of slightly counterbalance that argument. Did but you, that's, when you say energy levels dropped in the second half, yeah, England weren't Hopkins pressing with the scored, same intensity. Bellingham scored, but, but late in both games. No, no, no. Just talking particularly in the oh. final. So this is a focus on the okay. uh, on on the final. But look, Des, you saw the tournament. I mean, England were a team of moments. They didn't have that sort of sustained intensity that, that, that the Spanish did. Another lament, and you will have covered it in your time as a football correspondent. Your wafers, technical experts, started talking about this inability to keep hold of the ball was another reason why their England uh, pressing became less effective as the second half progressed, ultimately taking a physical toll too. England, so who's the FA have get, to take these. Who is it going to be? Come on. Okay, so there are two elements to this. I, I agree with you. The succession for me, it should be Eddie Howe. I'm sure Newcastle United will fire. File abs- you know, fight absolutely hard to keeping. Personally, I think it should be an Englishman. I think it should be our best against your best. Yeah. What is the point of £125 million pounds being lavished on a coaching hub and training centre in St George's Park if we then say to all the young coaches coming through, whether it's an Ashley Cole, whether it's a Michael Carrick, yeah. whoever, uh, by the way, we're going to parachute an overseas coach in. 
it didn't really work with Fabio Capello, Sven, three quarter finals, okay. So, yeah, so, absolutely. Ed, so, debate. so, who would you have? No, I'm saying, so if, so if Eddie Howe is the leading candidate, the yeah. candidate, and he's a fine manager, do you think he'd want to throw away the work he's built at Newcastle? Yes, the ground is shifting in the boardroom there, but does he want to be an international manager this early in his career? And he's a he's very young 46. Wouldn't he's he like to carry five, on? 600 I'm, games? I'm, I'm not saying this not experienced. I'm saying, would he want it at this time? Uh, well, you'd have to ask him, but New, Newcastle, job, really. New, Newcastle, you know, there's sort of debates about is he going to have to sell Anthony Gordon for, for PSR? I hope he, he, he continues with Anthony Gordon because you could see the development that Gordon made under him last season. I, I, I understand your point, but you look at this England squad. England have got a good squad. England got a squad with a trophy in them. There's, you've seen England squads down here. You look at the, the quality that Gareth was able to bring off the bench, whether it was Cole Palmer, whether it was Ollie Watkins, whether it was Ivan Tony, and we haven't even talked about some of the, the players who didn't go, you know, James Madison, uh, Branthwaite, players like that, mm. Cole Will. You know, England have got... It must be a very attractive time to go to England in terms of the players... Maybe one or two managers might think, ooh, succeeding Southgate, the pressure. Well, They're going to qualify for America. But these are competitive individuals so you, and you'd hope they would take that well, on. It sounds like you're saying it's Eddie Howe or we haven't got a clue. Well, I think they'll they'll put Lee Carsley in for the Ireland game, ironically being a former Republic of Ireland 40 international. Odd, 40 odd caps. Yeah, and, but, but obviously born in Birmingham. <laughs> you know, we talked to the FA earlier in the tournament about this. I was out in, in Blankenheim and I sort of said to them, I said, well, is, you know, are you committed to homegrown? And then who is homegrown? Is Steve Cooper effectively homegrown? Obviously he's embedded in a new club now and good luck to him there. Would it matter if, if Klopp took England to victory or Guardiola I still think it should be our best against your best but look if you're looking at the absolute elite end a Klopp or Guardiola then the FA would absolutely leap to them whether they can afford them is another issue and whether either of afford those two them. they'd be able to afford them afford them yes. in terms of what Garrison compared to what Pep and Jürgen might expect or have been on. I mean, there's quite a gap there. Would, with, with it wouldn't respect. be the first thing I'd be worried about, but yeah, okay. Well, the FA, I mean, what are they going to do? So sort of close down some of their sort of grassroots elements. So, look, it's a, but, but, but also, could you see Klopp or Guardiola wanting to take on England? I, I don't know. Again, maybe they've been in. Anglicised. Yeah. Well, look, they were. They, you can understand that. The the obvious target for them, if they were going to go down the foreign road, is Pochettino, um, because of his work working with. You know, we saw it at Southampton. You saw it at, at Tottenham Hotspur. The the young English talent that he developed. So you 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 could see that. But I personally would prefer. Uh, England to be coached by an Englishman, not for any sort of Colonel Blimp reasons, but I just think what message does it send to, to the young English coaches climbing up the pathway? I agree with you on that one. Um, so we haven't named the manager, so Ben White, who who would he pick? Because he doesn't want to play for Gareth Southgate, so uh, well, maybe if you want we'll to give him a choice. If you want to name the manager, I would absolutely go with Eddie Howe, but I would also embed a former England international like Ashley Cole, who's you know, impressing in the in, in the England age groups on his coaching path, a, a, a an individual like that, maybe a Jack Wilshire, someone like that, long term, if they wanted to get so you, heavily involved in the senior team. So you wouldn't contemplate Graham Potter, Frank Lampard, Stephen Gerrard, or being knocking around. I mean, they'll be in the mix, and as you say, you know, with their with their track record, particularly the last two that you you mentioned in terms of their England experience. Um, but no, I think Eddie Howe's got the, the personality, the attacking intent. He makes changes at the right time, decisively good changes. Gets in games, gets on with with players. I think he would he would step in step in well. Again, whether he wants to do that. Um, and what was your second question? Which is it, a very good question. It's not, it's not all good questions, but we've got plenty of time to go oh. through them all. Through them all. So you're listening to the Sunday edition with me, Des Kelly and Henry Winter. Coming up, we'll be joined by our Olympic reporter, Katie Shanahan, to discuss the latest from Paris on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.